Although boat building might seem like an entirely different kind of woodworking than cabinet making or carpentry, many of the tools are the same and the basic toolkit is actually smaller than you might think. I've divided the tools roughly into three groups. Tools for measuring and marking, tools for cutting wood and tools for joining wood together. And in essence, that's what wooden boat building is about. Drawing a precise line, cutting to the line, and then joining the finished piece to another piece of wood. In order to cut out precise parts for your boat, you need to know where to cut. And that's where the marking and measuring tools come to the rescue. The first thing you'll need is a sharp pencil and an eraser. I use a mechanical 0.7 pencil, but any sharp pencil will do. Then you'll need a tape measure at least as long as the boat for making your long measurements. I like to use a wooden folding rule for medium length measurements. For measuring and marking odd angles, you'll need a bevel gauge. Although a boat mainly consists of odd angles, you will also need a square. I like combination squares because of their versatility. Aside from being a square, there are also a steel ruler, a small spirit level and a marking gauge. You'll want to check that your square is actually square. This is done by drawing a line on a piece of wood with a straight edge and then flipping the square over and drawing another line. If the two lines are exactly parallel, your square is in good shape. A pencil compass is used a lot in wooden boat building for scribing. Scribing is the process of transferring the shape of one piece of wood to another in order to make them fit together. You will also need some string, a plumb barb and a level to make sure that the framework for your boat is straight, square, level and plumb as specified in the plans. Those were the measuring and marking tools, now to the wood cutting tools. First, you will need one or two hand saws. The hand saw that I use the most in boat building is a back saw. The back saw is called a back saw because it has a back. This back stiffens the saw, which allows it to have a thinner blade, which in turn makes the cut thinner, more effortless and precise. There are two main types of saws, Western and Japanese. Western saws cut on the push stroke, Japanese on the pull stroke. I use both and they both work great, as long as they're sharp. Most people that are new to woodworking love Japanese saws because they are very easy to start in the cut. The downside of a back saw is the fact that the back limits the depth of cut. Sometimes you will need to make deeper cuts, which can only be done with a backless saw. Some saws have teeth that are shaped specifically for doing rip cuts along the grain of the wood or cross cuts across the wood fibers. In boat building, you rarely do pure rips or pure cross cuts with a hand saw. So I like hand saws with a universal tooth shape that does both types of cut fairly well. That said, both a rip and a cross cut saw will do the job for you just fine, as long as it's sharp and relatively fine tooth. Then you'll need a few chisels. Chisels are basically a sharp edge at the end of a stick. Chisels are actually not used all that much in boat building, but for some tasks they are indispensable. One wide and one narrow chisel will be enough for your basic kit. Then you'll need a block plane. This is probably my favorite tool, and it's probably also the tool that I use the most, which is a happy coincidence and one of the reasons that I love boat building so much. The block plane is used for all sorts of precision shaping work getting smooth, fair and precise lines, beveling and trimming your work pieces for a precise fit. A good sharp block plane is so much fun to use. Just taking off shavings, I could do that all day. If you're on a budget and want to spend some extra money on only one high quality hand tool, the block plane would be the one to splurge on. If you're building a lap strake boat, you might consider a so-called rabbit block plane where the blade of the plane extends all the way across the width of the sole. 
this feature is handy when cutting the gains at the end of the planks. A block plane has a fairly long sole, which makes it great for smoothing out rough cut surfaces. Basically, the length of the sole makes sure that the plane can only cut the high spots on your workpiece. But when you're doing concave work, the blade of the plane will simply not be able to cut the wood. This is where the spoke shave comes to the rescue. Spoke shaves come in many sizes and shapes, but all that you need is one with a rounded sole, as it can take the tight curves that are found in many boat parts. The spoke shave with a rounded sole can be tricky to use though, so you'll need to practice and you'll need to keep it very sharp. Which leads me to the next thing you'll need, sharpening supplies. It might be a cliche, but it's true. Hand tools really need to be sharp to be useful. If you've ever used a dull chisel or hand plane, you know how frustrating it is. And actually, I think that a big part of the reason that most people almost only use power tools these days is that they've never tried a truly sharp hand tool. Sharp hand tools are so much fun to use. And they're efficient, make less noise, less dust, last several lifetimes. They're just great, but they really need to be sharp. I use a coarse and a fine diamond sharpening stone with a honing guide and get my final polish with a leather strop that's charged with honing compound. For the rough shaping of the edge and for grinding away any dings and nicks, I use a bench grinder with an adjustable tool rest. While you can do your rough grinding on the stones, I like the grinder because it's such a big time saver. It makes it so easy to sharpen my tools that I actually tend to get it done. Now on to the tools for fastening and joining wood together. First, you'll need a cordless drill with a set of good sharp wood drill bits to drill the pilot holes for your fastenings. Then you'll need a few screwdrivers and bits for your drill. For boats, I use slotted bronze screws. It's important that the driver fits the head snugly to keep it from slipping. For clinch nailing and riveting, you'll need a small hammer and backing iron. You can use a purpose-made backing iron, but normally I just use a lump hammer. If your boat uses copper rivets, you'll need a row of punch and a pair of end cutting nippers. You'll also need some clamps. Small one-hand clamps are great as extra hands to keep everything in place while you work. A few longer, heavier clamps will come in handy for heavier jobs and for glue-ups. That said, you don't necessarily need to spend all your money on clamps to get started in boat building. Often you can do the job just as well being creative with wedges, bracing, ratchet straps, temporary screws, all depending on the clamping task at hand. A few extra things that will come in handy are a pocket or utility knife, pliers, a corking gun, a few files and rasps, metal working drills, brushes for varnishing and painting. You will also build a few specialized tools for yourself, such as a jump stick for transferring surfaces and a spar gauge for eight siding spars and oars. So these are the basic boat building hand tools. But what about machinery? Well, most woodworking machines are loud, they're dusty, they're dangerous, but for some tasks they can be very handy and they can save you a lot of hard work. While boats can be built and have been built without, I like to use machinery for doing the rough work. The two essential machines in a boat building shop are the bandsaw and the thickness planer. The bandsaw is used for cutting up the rough lumber and for doing long curved cuts. The thickness planer is used for getting a nice smooth board once the wood has been cut rough on the bandsaw. Buying these machines, however, can be a big investment. So for someone just getting into boat building, the best bet might be to have a local boat builder or cabinet maker do the rough milling of your stock for you. 
then you will be able to get by with only a very small bandsaw or even a jigsaw for doing your curve cuts. If you're starting all the way from scratch, this list of tools might seem somewhat intimidating and the initial cost might seem high. But remember that these are lifetime tools that you'll need to buy only once. And you don't necessarily need to buy new tools. Vintage tools are often high quality and they can be had for very low prices at flea markets and online. So that was my introduction to the tools that you'll need to build a small wooden boat. You might need a few more tools depending on the project that you'll be building, but the tools that we've talked about today definitely covers the basics.